सतत रस्त्यावर मार्गस्थ असणे हेच आमचं काम आहे परंतु कोरोना विषाणू हा एक गंभीर मुद्दा आहे एक गंभीर संकट आहे आमची सर्वांना विनंती आहे की तुम्ही सरकारी नियमांचा पालन करा घरून काम करा हात नेहमी स्वच्छ धुवा आणि शक्यतो लोकांमध्ये कमी मिसळा घरी रहा सुरक्षित रहा Now a few weeks ago Land Rover launched this in India. This of course is the updated or facelifted Discovery Sport. Now when you talk about a facelift you normally talk about a bit of a nip and tuck in a couple of regions but this is a lot more. A new platform, a couple of updated engines, changes on the exterior and on the interior. So let's dive a little bit deeper and see what's really new. Let's talk about those obvious changes on the exterior first. There are elements similar to the larger full-size Discovery, especially around the front bumper, which is smoother, more aggressive, and has a lot more girth to it, at least visually. The S variant that we have here is the entry-level model that gets a pronounced silver skid plate on the lower half, matched with unpainted cladding around the edges and the sides. The grille is painted in a similar shade of silver with the typical Land Rover honeycomb design and the headlamps that are also akin to the ones on the bigger Discovery now get sharper with new LED daytime running lights and LED lighting elements as standard across all variants. Along the sides the changes are minimal with the exception of new wheels and around the back you get a similarly updated bumper with a set of new LED tail lights that have a really detailed lighting element. Now moving to the interior of the Discovery Sport it's certainly become a much nicer a more luxurious place to be in but some of the quirks that I used to particularly love of the pre-facelift car have sort of been replaced by something more conventional like the gear lever this more conventional gear lever replaces the older rotary knob that I particularly liked I thought it was a very cool maybe a little bit of a gimmick but very cool feature nonetheless you also get a lot of nice raw wood finish on center console on the side panels and the dashboard a lot of use of brushed aluminum and of course gloss black the center piece of the dashboard of course is the new 10 inch high definition infotainment screen that now thankfully features a brand new and much more usable user interface you also get the usual like inbuilt navigation apple car play ambient lighting and of course some off road data screens for when you go off the beaten path and just below that big touch screen is this big massive gloss black slab that has all the buttons you need for your climate control and some of the buttons actually double up to do more things so for example the fan button is in place of the temperature control for the passenger seat Other features include a new steering wheel with haptic feedback controls, a part digital part analog instrument cluster on this variant and a massive panoramic roof. The top spec variants do however get a full digital instrument cluster like this one here and that clear sight rear view camera and mirror screen package. One of the main draws of the Land Rover Discovery Sport is the fact that it is a 7 seat SUV and that seating configuration continues on the updated model too. But while there's a decent amount of space, the rear seat in particular offers slightly less under thigh support and the seat itself both front and rear are overly firm and just don't feel as plush as compared to some of its rivals. The third row is best reserved for children or for very short trips as there isn't enough space for a fully grown adult to spend any extended amount of time there. As we mentioned earlier the new Discovery Sport is now underpinned by a brand new platform it's called the premium transverse architecture and it's essentially the same platform that underpins the new Evoque now the first thing you realize straight away as you get into the car is the fact that it is a lot more comfortable it's a lot more pliant in terms of ride definitely soaks up bumps and bad roads a lot better and the other big difference is the fact that it is also a lot quieter not just in terms of engine noise but just in terms of general road noise as well the other thing you do notice it feels a little lighter on its feet it feels a little more nimble a little more active and i guess now the sport part of the discovery sport really comes into play a lot more the steering gives you confidence in the corners although it is a bit on the heavier side sometimes which might be a bit off putting for urban users and while ride comfort over rougher roads is better as we mentioned the disco sport does pick up those small ridges and broken surfaces and it has noticeable amount of body roll while changing lanes or while cornering hard it is not just the platform though that has been updated but also the engines 
You get a 2 litre petrol with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, making 245 horsepower and 365 newton meters of torque, or the 2 litre diesel that we have with us today. This definitely doesn't feel like a slouch. Now it's made it to a 9 speed automatic gearbox, and that gearbox has definitely been retuned in the update because even in normal drive mode, it doesn't feel as laggy or unresponsive as it felt earlier in the pre-facelift car. If you have a light enough right leg, the Discovery Sport will be happy to cruise around in the ninth gear at speeds as low as 80 km per hour, something most other SUVs with as many gears do not do. That said, when you do pin the throttle down and munch through the revs, power delivery does start to taper off rather quickly with that mildly disappointing top-end performance in the rev range. And while there is still some gruffness and it really can't match the level of refinement one notices with the Germans, it is an improvement over the early Discovery Sport. Of course, all variants get all-wheel drive as expected, mated to those rather legendary off-road modes like sand, snow, mud and an easier auto mode that lets the car's brain do the thinking. But there's no use just talking about them. This, of course, is a Land Rover and that means I'm obliged to take it off-road even if it's on a bit of a fast gravel trail. Let's go discover some. If you thought the Disco Sport was good on broken roads, it really comes into its own, especially on trails like these. And as we bashed through the Deccan countryside, kicking up dust on what was a glorious day with blue skies, the Disco Sport did everything we asked for without a single bit of fuss. Back on the road, the all-around nature of the Discovery Sport facelift answers the big question. Is the update big enough for you to take notice? Yes. The SUV certainly shows remarkable improvement over the pre-facelift Discovery Sport and while engine refinement is still off mark against its rivals or its handling is not as sharp, it does offer a contemporary look, a cabin packed with tech, especially on the R-Dynamic version and of course the ability to go off-road with relative ease if you ever intend to. And with that predatory pricing starting at 57 lakh 6,000 rupees for both petrol and diesel, the Discovery Sport facelift does make a very strong case for itself.